Good morning. Welcome to the uh, A2K Technologies AutoCAD 2014 update webinar. Um, we've got a few tools to show you today. It shouldn't take, I want to say, half an hour or so. But uh, some very, very good uh, user tools have been put into uh, this version of AutoCAD. So we'll get straight into it. We're going to look at um, environmental things first off, what they've done to the environment. Um, initially, we're going to start with the command line. So any of you that are into uh, typing your commands in, there's now an autocorrect for any misspelling. So if I was typing the full word of line, L-Y-N-E instead of line, it actually looks at what letters you put in here and tries to work out, well, what on earth are you putting in? So I find my line is there. We've also got layer, lay on, and a few others that include those. This is all coming from a, um, a new capability in AutoCAD in the AutoComplete. If I just come into the tools here for the command line and look at the input, input search options, we have this new AutoComplete tool which enables mid-string search. Now to give you an idea how that works, if I was trying to type layer and actually put A-Y-E instead of the layer command, it's actually doing a mid uh, word search and it found A-Y-E in the middle of all of these commands and throws them up. So this helps with misspelling and autocomplete. Um, so you can see this is all, uh, it's not got a phone ringing there, just switch that off. So we can see this is all able to get um, customised and you know, help us greatly with what we're trying to do. Now, a lot of you would be familiar with your ACAD PGP file. So uh, this is where you come in and you, you know, make L, coil up the line command, C, the circle command, or copy command, whatever you want. And under Manage Customization, we can edit these aliases. So it opens up the PGP file, and we can edit all of those. Now, they're taking this a step further. Now, some people used to do this in one PGP, but they're now supplying three PGPs. Uh, one, you can put your own autocorrect list in. So if you know something that people are constantly doing particular misspellings, it could even be... Um, something like color, you want to type it C-O-L-O-U-R instead of just the O-R. So you can put that relationship in here. But you could also put it, if you wanted, under the synonym. You can sort of see there's a lot of things coming up that will be the same. We've got uh, here, somebody wants to use length every time they want to call up the distance command, or they could call width as well, they'll call up the distance command. When they're looking for their e-transmit, a lot of people know it as, oh, I need to share my files, I need to send my files. There you go, transmit and package. All of those commands are going to call up eTransmit. So really all they're doing is expanding the PGP file into three separate files so it's more manageable for the CAD manager. Otherwise, yeah, you could, by rights, put all of this into one file. Now, I don't know how many of you work with uh, Dynamics switched on, but if you have it switched off and you start typing through the command line, you start getting you know, all the commands with line in. But here, I can go to the search in help and search on the internet for getting extra information. Now, if I'm using Dynamic and I type line, it doesn't always work. It's going to work on this one, but sometimes you find dynamic will interfere and not work with that. So just keep an eye on it. Now there is a very interesting thing going on on here right now. If I was just to come in here, I've got 16 layers sitting in there. We've got a new way that we can actually change layers. I can come in and start typing. Let's just switch dynamic off. Start typing layer. And here, I can actually see all of my layers. So I'm able to very quickly come in and say, no, I want layer 3. And it will change it up there. I've also got three blocks called box 1, 2, and 3 in here. 
I don't have to go into the block command. I can actually start typing box. So I've started just typing the B and the O. You can see it's picking up a few commands, plus it's found three blocks beginning with BO. It's also found two um, hatches with BO in the name. So I'm able to insert blocks. I'm also able to, if I was to go in there, whoops, let's just do a rectangle. I can also do things like the BO, go and open this up, and go and use the herringbone hatch and place that in there as well. So we're seeing the keyboards coming into its own right with the, with the things that they're doing in it. Uh, the ability of typing down here, we can call up block names, hatch patterns, and layer names as we've seen. I can also get into any styles. So if I was trying to pull, uh, pull up a style here, I could type anote and it's going to give me, well, you've got a text style and a dimension style. So I could go and set that. That's now gone set up here. So the last thing we can get into with that, of course, is all of the variables. So you can open up that, and here's all your variable list to do with DIM. So um, for keyboard users, definitely some great enhancements to 2014 that you can start looking at. Now I'm just going to open uh, a few files here. I'm just going to grab that lot. This is just take a few seconds to open. Now what's happening now, and some people aren't happy with it, and we'll show you how to switch it off if you want, is the tabbing across the top. So we've got these tabs indicating all the drawings that we've got open, so we can very quickly change between our open drawings. Now some of the use some of you would have used the you know, sort of window command to go and change windows. And some of uh, you would have used the, let's just wait for this to get up, and I'll just show you just to make sure people were using it. There was the multi-drawing uh, capability down the bottom of AutoCAD. So once this is open, right. Okay, so we can go and change between all of these as we want. Now what we used to do was come in here and I could do quick view drawings. So now I could see all the drawings I've got open and I could change to the layouts or do whatever I wanted. They've done the same here. So I can come into here and I go to model the layouts that belong to these so I'm getting a preview. I can very quickly move between them. If you want you can move the importance of the drawings. So D6 you know, is a bit more important than the other so I'm going to move that up, yeah, up to the beginning there. Um, when I'm in here, I can actually pick on these uh, tabs and uh, yeah, just get into the different environments of the different drawings very quickly and easily. Now, other things we can do, I can do mouse right buttons, I can do save all of these files that are open right now, I can close all the files, I can close all except the current tab that I'm on. Another nice one is open from a file location. So you have multiple files open. You go to one, you go, oh, there's other files in that folder I need to get. You can very quickly just come in here and you can go and see what files you've got in that location. So that's a very nice tool that they've added in there. Now there are a, a number of things going on here. Was that you'll notice I've just done some work in this file and an asterisk has appeared. That is telling me while I'm looking at all of these that this file does require a save. So there have been additions done to it. So um, you know, we could possibly you know, take that and open it from, and um, do a save on it. I can also do things like I'm going to open this file and I'm just going to open it as a read only. So when you have a look now, I've now got my merge document and I can see there's a padlock beside it which tells me very quickly and easily that, hey, you've got this one as a read-only file. I can close it from there with minimal fuss. I don't have to go to it. I can just go to drawings, click on the X and close them. Now when I go in and have a look at uh, all of these, if I had things I wanted on the layout, I can plot and publish. So on all of these, you've got plot and publish capability. Okay. So again, very quick to get into different things. 
Now, I'm just going to open what I've got. It's just going to open a couple more drawings. Now, as you get more and more drawings open, which I've now got now, and I have filled the um, tabs across the top, they'll start showing this button here, which will now give you a list to get into them because basically they can't show them all across the top of the screen. So you can very quickly move between all these and get to the drawings that you require. So it's, it's well thought out what they're doing with all of this. So right now I could uh, come through here. Let's just go and close all except this tab. It's asked me because that D8 had changes. Do you want to save it? Well, no, I won't bother with that for the time being. So any drawings that have had edits done to them, it's now asking me, do you want to save? And the rest it will just close down without any prompts at all. So um, quite a nice tool. It does work well. You can get to new drawings from here. So I can start with new. Bang, I'm straight into the templates area. You've also got new there, open existing drawings there, so we don't have to do as much moving to get to a lot of these commands. If you really don't like it, you can go view and on the user interface, here's your file tabs. You can just toggle them off, they're not there. So some people feel it's taking up too much screen area and they're happy to work with the older commands down here. That's fine, it's all options that Autodesk are giving to you to try and make your job easier getting your drawings out. Now, let's just go and create a, a brand new drawing here. They've done a quick improvement to layers. What used to happen with the layers, if I just came through here and just keep creating layers, what would happen as you get to you know, the later ones, it just won't sort them properly. You go layer 1, then layer 10, 11, 12, layer 2, 3, it's now recognizing the numbers properly in numeric order. So uh, we don't have to put up that daft thing of yeah, layer 1 followed by layer 10. We've now got all this working quite nicely. Just go and have a quick look at another tool that they've thrown into the layers. I've got a few layers there, so what one's that one? Layer 1. I want to merge that to be on layer 2. So coming in here, I can just do a mouse right button on layer 1. Come down to the merge selected layers 2. Comes up with all the layers. I want to merge that onto there. It's warning me. That's what I'm going to do. And when I hit yes, it moves all of the line work across to layer 2 and purges out that layer 1. It no longer exists. So it's now gone across to my layer 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So, few changes with layers. Yeah, was it's just sort of like a handful of changes in sort of each area of AutoCAD. It's made this quite a nice release. I'm just going to have a look at XREFs a minute. So I'm just going to XREF a couple of drawings into this one. So let's just go for our C drive temp. And I'll do another one. Now, I don't know how many of you get very concerned about, oh, do we overlay, do we attach? And once we've done it, it's so hard to correct. So you can see both of these just came in. I used the default attach. The nice thing we've got now is if I decide for some reason down the track that you know, this project requires these to be changed to an overlay, I can just double click on them. That has changed them to an overlay that quick. Double click on them again, they're back to being an attach. So this is a great change that they've done in that. Another one that they've also done is they've made it easier to change the path to making it absolute or relative from where you are or removing the path completely. So this can be very handy when you're getting files from elsewhere from other companies and you've got to manipulate their files. Being able to remove those paths or make them relative to the folder you're in now is going to you know, just speed up the whole process of managing extracts greatly. Okay, let's just jump back to um, an empty drawing. 
going to show you uh, a few nice tools that they've added in just for drawing. So I'll just draw a couple of lines in here. Now this has got to be a favourite, is the art command, where people come along they say, look, I want to do a start, a centre, and an end, and they're trying to fill that quadrant of uh, this circle, if you wish, with this art command. So they go and pick it, and it's asking for, where's the, yeah, come back in here and say, look, start, center, end, and you pick the wrong ones. And it's actually going to come through when you pick, let's try that again, that's totally the wrong one. So I've got my start point, my center point, and my end is gonna come there, and I want it to go the other way. I can do it very quickly. What I just did then was hit the control key. So I'm holding the control key down. It's now drawing the arc clockwise instead of, when I release it, anti-clockwise. So if you realize the arc's going backwards, hold down control, and then you can go and pick and put that in. So we can draw arcs in a clockwise direction, but only if you use the control key. Another nice little feature they've chucked in is with polylines. Um, if I've got a shape in here, and that's an open polyline. Previously, if I tried to fill it an open polyline, it just wouldn't let me. It says, look, you can't do that. It is an open polyline. Now I can come through with the fillet command, and basically that has changed that into a closed polyline. So the fillet command and the chamfer commands are now fully accepted in being able to close polylines with either a fillet or a chamfer on them. A uh, very quick note, uh, I don't have any sheet sets on here, but if any of you are using sheet sets, one thing that annoyed a lot of people is when they had um, an automatic creation date on their title block, it would always fill it out with the creation date of the template that was used to create the file now it's been corrected and it will actually put the proper creation date for that individual drawing. So uh, that is a, a great plus as well. Now in plotting, I believe I could safely say most people out there would be using CTBs, uh, colour tables. There are a handful of people out there, it doesn't mean they're wrong, it's just they're using a different method, using STBs, which is more a layer-based plotting methodology. Well now, was that we've got a very easy convert plot styles command, where if I come in there and hit OK, I can go and pick an STB, and it will go and change it all, and vice versa. I can change STB-based drawings to color tables by using this command. So be aware that that one is in there. They've got a small one, which to me can be switched off anyway. If any of you got attributed blocks and you're inserting them into a drawing, the attribute edit dialog box comes up because the at a -double -T -D -I -A command is switched on. Well, we used to have it switched on automatically on older AutoCADs. It seemed to disappear for a few years and now they've um, switched it back on again. But if you go and switch it off, then you change the whole lot of settings anyway. So it really doesn't matter on that one. Any of you using the dtext command? So not the multi-line um, text command, but the single line text command. What it is able to do now is remember justification. So if I go and pick this and say, look, I'm putting right justified text in and start typing this in. Okay. The next time that I go and use that command, by default, it is remembering the justification was right last time I used it. So unless I go and change it, and I just go and put it in again, it's going to be right justified text. So that's just the setting that they've added to, re to uh, remember that for you. We've also got a similar thing happening with hatch. So if I use the hatch command, any settings that I make in here, whether I go and say, look, I'm going to pick a point or select, so I'm going to pick a point, uh, I'm using particular angle, it's associative, scales and all things like that. Those are now being remembered. So when you go into hatch again, 
who remembers all of this and I can just go and pick a point, it's using the angle, associate and all the same scales. So we've got a few tools now, you know, that are older tools, just remembering things which make it a lot handier for uh, when we're doing this type of work. Okay, we're going to have a quick look at dimensioning. I'm just going to create a new style. So I'll just call this one GB2, based on the ISO 25. But we'll do a couple of changes. I'll change the arrows. Uh, I'll make the text twice as high. And maybe on this one we'll have colored text. That'll do. Okay. Now, an old thing that we used to have, if I was to come along and put some dimensions in and use the continue command, so come along with the dim continue, always used whatever was currently set. Well, they've changed that now to be a little bit more intelligent. Let's just go and leave that one there. I'll come along and put my new style in. So that's sitting there. But I want to do a continue. So I'll do a dim continue on. Uh, select this one. And what it does, it not only continues from that, it goes and changes. Even though you're not seeing it up there, it's using this star. So it's gone and changed the star for that continue command. So it's actually making it a lot less mucking around for the user. And the same thing is applying there to baseline. So it remembers what you've used here previously. Even though that this one is set, if I go and put it in, it's still got that one as current. But this is an override that's now in there to stop all those annoying mistakes where you go continue and it uses a different style. This will always pick up the correct style for you. Okay. Was it? I'm not sure how many of you have got your... Um, Autodesk 360 accounts, and I'm also not sure how many of you are allowed them, depending on you know what the rules are at your individual companies. But what Autodesk have done is through um, being logged on to Auto, Autodesk 360, I can start inserting maps in there. So instead of what a lot of people have been doing in the past is where they're going to Google Maps and doing screen captures and copy and paste them into drawings, we can actually come through here now on the insert and go to location and I can go and pick up a map. Yep. Just waiting for this to come up. Try that again. Always falls over when you don't want it to, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, I'm all logged in. Let's just see. Yep. Great. There's a few of us been having problems with our Autodesk 360 accounts. Mine's been working perfectly fine this morning for all the tests, but it's failed right now. No, not going to get it. It's really annoying. What this would do is go into a, another screen and allow us to pick a location, so I could type the Melbourne office here, it's uh, 470 Collins Street, Melbourne. It will show me a map, I can bring that map into AutoCAD. I can have it as like a photogrammetry type map, I can have it as roads only. Uh, there's all different um, levels of maps that we can pick and put into this drawing. However, mine is not working, so we'll have to go past that. One thing I will tell you right now, if we do have a, we seem to be having problems with our um, Autodesk 360 accounts, um, if you go to YouTube and look for AutoCAD 2014, there are a series of um, movies on there from AutoCAD Exchange, and they do show this capability that I've not been able to show there. And the next one that I'm not going to be able to show is because it's 360 again is this design feed. So what happens is you've got to save your drawings up to your 360 account and at the moment we're having all these problems with um, syncing our drawings up to our site so we're not able to do it. 
But when you've done that, we can use all these tools here, which basically is allowing people to put comments on the drawing. So you can see all the things here. You can highlight areas that you're indicating in. I can add images to it. I can put any comments. So I could be the checking engineer having a look at drawings, putting a lot of comments on about work that I need to be done to the drawings. I can have picture examples, use my images. I can then tag all the people I want to have a look at this and email them to tell them that there's a file waiting to be uh, looked at on the Autodesk 360. Again, this one is sitting up on the internet. I know this sounds pretty poor, but hey, you're not the only ones that have problems. We have problems with this stuff occasionally too. It's just unfortunate it's decided to hit us today on this. Right, I'm not sure how many of you might be using um, 3D scanning capabilities, but what Autodesk have issued with every product or every suite release at the moment, which says 214, let's just hang on that, is a product called Autodesk Recap. So what Autodesk Recap allows us to do is create new projects, go and get scan files. So if I had a whole series of files, which I'm afraid I don't, um, I can just go and grab this file in, which is a point cloud. But if I had, say, 10 of these making up a whole site, I can bring them in here, do um, manipulation uh, on here, doing noise filters, so you know, I can get rid of any sort of yeah, that's sort of grainy interference. There's all clipping and things like that you can do. There's all advanced features as well. So I can start the import. And the nice thing is if I had multiple files, they'd all be locked up into one project. I could then take that um, project and manipulate it even further. So you can see I can bring things like this in. Let's just close another one. Let's just have a quick look. So yeah, you've got a bit of a pump in there. I think I've got a complete one somewhere. So let's just go and have a look. That one. So this is a, a larger one. I'll just bring this in. I won't do any changes to it. Start the import on that. Now you can imagine the bigger the files, and this is a bigger one, it's going to take a little bit longer to bring it in. So um, if you've got like 10 scans where they've moved the scanner 10 times to do different aspects of your 3D job, it could take you know, 20 minutes or something to bring it in. So I'm just going to have a look at this one here. And we've got another foul. This is unbelievable. This is just to sort of show that things can go wrong when you're running live. So let's see if I've actually got anything I can bring in. Now the whole thing is, when you've manipulated it in there, you end up with a one file format. Instead of you know, six or seven files, I end up with one. So I can just come through here and attach. Now in the past, we've had things like... Um, point cloud scans and Autodesk point clouds. We've now got these point cloud projects. So let's hope I've got one still in here that's not damaged from before. And there it is. Okay, so that's a complete one where I've brought multiple files into um, Recap. I've manipulated them, got them how I want, and I can bring that whole job in. It's not just a case of playing around with that. I can do other nice things such as I'm only interested in that pump. I don't need the rest of the job. So let's just get this into parallel mode. I'll just pick on the bounding box and I've got different clipping that I can do. So I'm going to do a polyagonal and I'll just come through here and say, look, I want that. So now it's gone and clipped the job, so only that is available for me to see. So with all of this you can switch things off, so you can you know, switch off your clip frame, you can switch off your bounding box if you want. So um, we've got 
you know, a, a few more manipulating tools inside AutoCAD. And this um, recap tool is exceptionally good for bringing in a wide variety of formats of scanned um, images. So if I just go and have a look at this, here's all the file formats you get. So there's a few of the Pharaohs and Leicas and various other ones. And they've just got uh, E57 files, which are quite popular out there too. Your text, XYZs, uh, just your point clouds. So you might even get it. You've got um, one area been scanned by three or four different companies and they've all supplied you with different files. You can bring all of those together in here as one project and then easily open one project inside AutoCAD and incidentally this also works for uh, Reddit. Um, so you can you know, bring that in very quickly and easily without a lot of mucking around. So um, they've given us some nice tools there for those of you that are going to get into your uh, 3D scanning. Now I'll just point out as well, any of you that have um, bought any of the suites, you will also find that raster design is part of nearly every suite. So check that with uh, when you're purchasing or updating. But this tool, which we're not going to show, it's been around forever, but the fact that they've given it to nearly everyone with the suites is great. It's the best sort of um, editing tool for 2D scanned images. So if you've got old 2D scanned drawings, you can use raster design with AutoCAD, open the files up, edit them. You can convert them to lines, circles and arcs if you want, so it's got all the that capability in. So uh, they've definitely given us more value in the suites. And of course with all of these tools, they're starting to look at the 3D scanning. Now, looking at the customization side of things, let's just have a look at what they're giving us uh, here. I'm not sure, I'm just going to options, if any of you are uh, running Windows 8, I'm not, but apparently you've got your touch screen capabilities, you can display a touch mode ribbon panel which is applicable to the uh, Windows 8 users. So that's Autodesk is starting to you know, supply tools specific for the Windows 8. Um, the package out of the box now. They're actually giving us a few different um, featured apps that they think are worthwhile. So you know, they're making those available to us. They're much more just freebie ones that they put on there. Of course, you can connect to Exchange and you can download any other free apps or uh, possibly you know, purchase any that are, are very relevant to your type of work. Also, we've got a few extra plugins. So uh, on the plugins, we've got import SKP files, which are Google SketchUp. So if you've got people working with Google SketchUp, we can easily bring that into AutoCAD now using this. Uh, they've also supplied us with a very good um, app manager that allows you to see if you, know, you need to update or whether you want to uninstall, what size all these are taking up. So you've got a tool to manage all the apps that you're possibly downloading. For those of you that are running um, Autolisp or Visual Basic, things like that, they've decided what they're going to do now is put a trusted locations um, folder or folders. You can have multiples in here. So what that is telling anybody, if, if you've got a um, bunch of Lisp programs under, say, P Drive Lisp, and P Drive Lisp is in here, then AutoCAD knows that this is trusted and it can load it without any issues. What they've done sort of further um, to all of this, if I go to system and come to my security and have a look at these execu executable file settings, this is all associated with that folder. So it's telling you with loading, you can load from all locations without displaying a warning or load from trusted locations and display a warning if somebody's loading list or VBA from another location. Or you actually stop them and they can only load from those trusted locations. So if somebody's got a USB with stuff on, they won't be able to load it because this is actually going to control it. So um, again, another good CAD management tool for um, 
this version that's going to help a lot of you uh, manage things like lists and VBA. Okay, apart from a couple of hiccups with our Autodesk uh, 360, um, that, are, that is basically the tools that have come with this version of 2014. Uh, the thing is, is to start getting in there, playing around with it, 